Yes or no? All right. So that means you're being recorded. All right. For a while, I'm going to need you to mute your mics. And then when I get through going over the presentation, I will unmute you. Okay. Or you can unmute this. So everybody mute and give me a minute to get to the page. And it'll take me a second to get there. Hang on just a minute. Okie dokie, Smokey Pinocchio. All right, uh, just for right now, um, uh, Riley, unmute and tell me if you see the slides. I see them. All right, then you can mute back. Okay, so I'm going to go over what we're going to be doing. All right, so I saw this pro uh, project on uh, Facebook. Since people have been practicing social distancing, particularly in cities, uh, they can't get out in the yard like we can, which is pretty sad, but they can't. And so they've been doing some creative things. And I saw a group in uh, Europe that they started recreating paintings using themselves and objects. And so what I thought, why don't we do that? We are GT kids and I can post them on Facebook, on YouTube, on the school website and see if we can turn this viral, which would be so cool if we could. So the name of this project is A Lot From A Little. And the reason it's called that is it's been proven that people are the most creative when they don't have a whole lot of options of things to work with. None of you have a costume room at your house. None of you have a room that's got props in it. Uh, you don't have rooms that have scenery or things that you can use from that. All you have is what is around you. You can't go to Golden Grotto. I don't even think they're open anymore right now. So you got to use what's around you. And that means you have to be creative. So this is a creative to creativity challenge. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about. And you're going to work on this next week. All your stuff will arrive in your uh, Google Classroom on Monday. All right. So here's a group in Europe. The, well, actually, these aren't, this is not the Europe group. This is a group in one of the Asian countries who decided they were going to become famous paintings. And these are all women. And so what they did was they put makeup on their face. In the case of the screen, they put one of the bald caps on. And they did a background. And they are inside that painting. They're actually standing there. So uh, you can tell that it's the person and what they've done. They, the top half of them has been turned into that famous painting. So you see the screen, the Mona Lisa. Um, there's definitely a, a Van Gogh self-portrait. Now, what we're going to do is not going to be like that. It's going to be more like this. Uh, this is a painting by Wyeth, who we've had as one of our artists of the week. It is of a girl laying in a really barren looking field. It looks like it's already been harvested probably for hay. And she's looking to the back, to the horizon at this house. It might be her house, but it's a gray looking house, kind of gloomy. The lady who recreated that painting, all she did was go to a park. The building now becomes a background that looks like businesses. She really didn't do much with her clothes either. She doesn't even have on a dress. She has on pants and a top. Her hair is kind of pulled back the same way, not quite as messy. But what she did to recreate this painting was the position of her body. So look at where the legs are. Look at where her hands are and how her head is turned. And when you look at the two together, you can say, yeah, I can see that she's kind of recreated that painting. Here's another one. In this one, someone has used this little girl to create, uh, recreate the painting of the lady that's doing the laundry. And if you'll look at the comparison between the two, the little girl is in front of a washing machine, which makes it really creative because the lady in the other picture could only have dreamed of a washing machine. She's washing the way they did have to wash. The little girl has her little Tupperware bowl. And instead of washing clothes, she's actually washing her stuffed animals. There's a little metal uh, container there that's kind of like the pitcher, the metal pitcher that you see in the painting. She's sitting on her little red stool instead of a wooden uh, tub with a, a lid on it. And uh, she's wearing something around her head like the lady has the white bonnet. 
She's put on something white around her neck. And she has on that blue shirt, which is really important and makes that painting even look more real because of the blue shirt. She is turned the same way. Her face is looking up at you, just like the lady in the painting. The little girl is holding her animal, just like the lady is holding the white thing she is washing. In this one, we see a lady that's impersonating this painting, or she's recreating it. The lady in the painting has a harp. I don't know anybody that's got a harp. Uh, I, I take that back. I know one lady in Jonesboro who has a harp. This lady has used something that you would fold out and make shelving, and she has it all folded up to resemble a harp. She has a sash around her waist. Her sash is not the same color as the lady. Her hair is not as elaborate, but she did pull her hair up. And she does have on a long, similar color dress. But look at the position of the hands. Similar. It would probably have been better if the lady had moved both hands onto the grid instead of just one. But she's looking the same direction. Here's the little boy who recreated um, uh, Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper. And he did it using his stuffed animals. And I'm sure if you count them, there would be 12, just like there were 12 disciples in the painting of The Last Supper. He has put food on the table in styrofoam plates. Uh, I think there's a, a donut. I saw Pop-Tart in one place. Uh, he has uh, a little picture there to represent the picture. Uh, he is by, the, behind him are windows, and there are windows behind Jesus. And so he's done a pretty good job of recreating this painting. You do not have to use all people. You can do like uh, the little girl did in the painting of the uh, laundry lady, or here you can use uh, stuffed animals. You can use people in your family to be in it, anything you want to. This is a painting of a lady reading, and she has a really odd hairdo and a yellow dress. The little girl who recreated it does not have on a dress. She has on a yellow jacket, but she has fixed her hair as close as she can to the lady in the painting. And instead of reading a book, she's reading an iPad or playing a game on an iPad. Uh, if you'll notice, she also put a blue jacket in the picture, similar to the one, uh, the fabric we see in the painting. And in the painting, where that, that red is coming down, uh, she's putting something red underneath her jacket. In this one, the lady is replicating this crazy black hat this woman has on. Uh, and she got a small wastebasket, put it on her head, tied it on. And instead of getting a necklace, she put around her neck one of those stretchy uh, things that people put keys and stuff on. And in order to make the dress kind of look the same, she simply got a blouse and she just buttoned it at an angle. So it resembled the one of the lady. Facial expression is pretty much the same, except the lady might have closed her eyelids a little bit more. In this recreation, they have used this little girl to recreate, recreate the uh, painting of the little girl at the ocean. And so instead of putting her in the ocean, and this is what we'd have to do with this social distancing because we can't go to the beach, she's standing in the bathtub and they have water around her feet. In the bathtub, they put a sailboat. Uh, I have a suspicion that it's not a real sailboat. It's probably something they made. And you can make props with stuff that you have in your house. She has on uh, probably a pair of white panties on her head, if I was guessing, uh, to kind of look like the little white bonnet on the little girl. She has black on the top, white on the bottom, and she's holding her hands together. Kayla was one of our artists of the week, and uh, she's from Mexico. She, her standard, she's really known for that unibrow that goes all the way across from one eyebrow to the other. And so this little girl has had someone get an eyebrow pencil and jot in a unibrow on her. And also, I'm sure her eyebrows are really, really blonde. And so they've used that eyebrow pencil to kind of darken her eyebrows. She has on that bright red lipstick. Her hair is up. She has flowers in her hair. She's wearing a flowery uh, blouse. It probably isn't even her own. She's probably got one of her moms turned around backwards. Uh, black sweater over her shoulders like Kalo. And I'm sure that necklace is her mom's too. The expression is the same, just a straight look at the uh, viewer. This is a funny one, especially now when people are having trouble getting hold of toilet paper. 
But those ruffled collars they used to wear like during the days of uh, probably like the 1600s, 1700s, they were wearing those. Uh, this lady got the rolls of toilet paper and she kind of hooked them all together and, and put it around her neck to make a great big collar. For the bonnet, she put a hand towel. She does have on black and she has rolled up the cuff of a white shirt to do the cuff. However, she could have been a whole lot better if she changed her body position. Her body position is off. She's facing straight. The lady in this painting is turned sideways. If the woman that had recreated this painting had turned sideways, her picture would have been uh, a whole lot like the painting in really in a big way. This is a famous painting of a man that is completely made out of fruits, vegetables, and flowers. And this little girl is lying down. She has the fruits and vegetables all around her face. And she has got red, rosy cheeks. And the man uh, in the original painting is smiling. And so it does a pretty good job. They could have maybe laid a green bean over each of her eyebrows, which might have been funny. This is very simple. We're talking about do a lot with a little. This is about as little as you need. Uh, MC Escher was one of our artists uh, this semester, actually. And this particular uh, print that you're seeing is of Escher. You're looking at him. Uh, it's his hand holding a glass orb or ball or uh, anyway, he can see his reflection in there. And that's Escher himself. And you can see the room he is behind him. So this person who recreated the painting, they are holding a Christmas ball and you've seen those, they reflect like a mirror. And so they're looking in and you see that person in that Christmas ball and you see the background of where they're sitting. This is a, a complicated headdress on this lady. I don't know if she's a nun or if just the time period, but in order to capture that, this woman just went and got a bath towel and put it around her head and wrap something around her neck, probably a t-shirt. She does have on black. She is positioned more like the lady in the painting is than the one that I was talking to you about before. Same, uh, same facial expression. The only difference is the lady in the painting, the head covering comes down and covers up all her hair and lays in between her forehead. So this lady might could have done a better job if she'd pulled that towel down a little bit. Now, this painting is only for second grade, so you cannot choose this one. There are some that um, I felt like were a little bit easier to do, and so those are going to be for second. So you can't choose this one. Here's another one you can't choose, but I will tell you this. This is for second grade, too. And you can see I've given, written down some little clues of some things they can do to kind of help them get that uh, look. Uh, oh, I saw one that uh, the group did and they were recreating, which this is American Gothic. They used just a regular table fork like you eat with. And when they took the photograph of themselves as that painting, they held the fork really close to the camera lens and it made the fork look really big. It was real clever. This is another second grade only, but this one's a little harder than it may appear because you've got to do the gray color on this one. Uh, it's not just the position of the hands, but it's the gray. How are they going to do that? Here's another second grade only, uh, Whistler's mother. But here is a challenge. Now, some of the uh, ones that you can choose from will have the word challenge on there. What that means is this project will be worth 100 points. But if you choose a painting that has the word challenge written on it, the point value is doubled. So this would be a 200 point painting rather than a 100. So you have to think about well, what's the most important thing because you can't recreate the whole thing. And I don't expect anybody to grow old overnight or grow a beard or any of that. But the things that stand out are what you want to do. And of course the skull sitting on the bone on the book stands out. And you probably, I hope you don't have a skull at home. Some of you might if you have Halloween decorations. But I mean, think there's things that you could use for a skull that could sit there. Uh, the red cape is really important, that color red. Looking in the book, the position of the hand, the hands holding the pencil, um, maybe a, a sheet that's draped over a table. But this is a challenge one, 200 points. Uh, here's Mary Cassatt. 
Uh, again, you can use other people to help you with this because, but you have to be in the painting. You are in your recreation. You have to be there. And so what you're seeing here is a painting that uh, the colors are important. Pinks and aquas. Uh, this is one that if you were going to recreate it, the book is important. Uh, the position of the people, but also the colors. Do you have to have it completely like this? No, you can't do that. But you could use some pink and some aqua in that painting or your recreation. This is a saison, the thing that stands out of the hats, the pipe the table, the cards, and the fact that these really are not very bright colors. This is a challenge, and then you can see why. He's got a green face. Uh, it's also a challenge because it needs a fiddle or a violin, and a lot of people are not going to have that. I mean, most people are not going to. But what could you do? What could you hold that is sort of violin-y? What could you use for a bow? Uh, you don't have to have a violin. In fact, it makes it a lot more fun for someone to look at if you've been creative and use things that kind of give you the essence of what that is. Uh, the purple color, I think, is important on this. Does it have to be a coat? No. Uh, he's standing on buildings or on the houses. Man, could you figure out a way to make that look like that? Do you have to do all of these things? No but you do have to choose the ones that really stick out. And I think that green face and that purple and that violin stick out to me. The position of the head, the hands, the hat, all of that's important. This is the Da Vinci. And the reason I have this one in here that I want to talk to you about is she is holding that is animal was actually a mink. Uh, and the, what stands out in this painting is the band around her forehead, the way her hair's parted, the necklace around her neck. Uh, the way she's got her head turned. Uh, you could hold anything that uh, could be an animal. I mean, a stuffed animal, you could hold that. You could hold pretty much anything. Uh, so this is a Da Vinci. This is a Degas, the position that she is in. Now then, I'm going to mention something to you. You know, uh, a lot of these are paintings of women and a lot of them are paintings of men. Uh, that does not limit you. I mean, it'd be pretty funny, actually, for uh, one of the guys, you know, to decide they're going to do this funny ballerina a painting or some of these others too and make it funny. Uh, what could you do to make, if, even if you're a girl, what could you do to make something look like a big tutu? Because nobody's got a big tutu at home, probably. Uh, the position of the feet, the arms, the face. This has got a lot of green in it. Do you need to do that? You can't do it all, but you need to pick what you think makes it look more. Remember the painting of the or the recreation of the lady that was laying in the prairie looking at the house and the woman who recreated it only used the position of the character. This is a challenge. I just threw this in here for fun. Can you think of why you could turn yourself into Hokusai's wave? Hmm. Uh, might figure out a way to do that. Uh, there's Mount Fuji in the background. Just threw that out here, see what you do. Uh, this is a sergeant. Uh, he paints people, and uh, he was an impressionist, new to my looking. And this is of uh, a young man in the woods. He has a hat on. He has his two dogs with him, and the woods are pretty dense. How could you recreate that? Here's another challenge. I don't have to explain to you why. How are you going to turn yourself into that? But I think there would be a way. And you can't draw it on a piece of paper and hold it up. You have got to be the painting. Here's another challenge for obvious reasons. Uh, this is a Monet. We've had Monet uh, two years. Uh, he actually is in, um, uh, is every year we do a Monet because he's such an important artist. Um, the colors are important. It's an outside picture. I think that it's got to be a pretty blue sky. Uh, look what she's holding. She has on a hat. Uh, there is another person in there. Does it have to be a little boy with a hat on? Absolutely not. Uh, what do you think you need to do to recreate this? The way you're standing is always going to be crucial. How do you become a purple flower? Hmm. It's a challenge. Here's another challenge, a Picasso challenge. Uh, how are you going to rearrange your face? How are you going to make your face look like it's just not right? Think about it. 
this is a challenge uh, because of the position and you've got that red wing there. Now I'm not telling anybody to get naked and do this. I mean, you're going to have to wear clothes. What's important about this is the position of the characters, how they are looking. You will have to have or figure out a way to get another person to help you with this. This is a challenge because of the colors. This is um, uh, a Rembrandt, of course, and we know how he does dark colors and then he'll use his light. Uh, we got this big cape dude going, thing going on around there. And the hat is important. Uh, the, the thing that you first notice is that big, tall, red, uh, white feather. And I don't know anybody has, oh, I'll just go get a white feather that's about a foot and a half long out of my closet. Uh, I don't know anybody that has that. But what could you use to substitute and make that? And look at the man's facial expression. This one is a challenge. He looks like he's sitting in the shadows. Here's a Renoir, and the thing that stands out are the, is the guitar and the orange scarf and the black hat. Uh, when you're recreating, you have to say, what is the thing you mostly see? Uh, you don't have to use a guitar. There's a lot of things you could hold. You can hold like a guitar. That's what makes this fun. This is a Rivera. I remember he was a muralist. Uh, this is a man on his knees and on his hands. He's got on a yellow hat and he's got a heavy load that's tied around him in the front. I know no one who has a basket that big and I know no one who has that many flowers right now. Do you have to have a basket full of flowers on his back? No, it could be anything that appears to be heavy. Uh, it's also important to have someone act like they're helping you. And uh, we see the way that their head is leaned. Uh, the red skirt really shows up too, doesn't it? Here's the Norman Rockwell, a little girl in white looking at herself in the mirror. The position is extremely important when the picture is taken for this one. You need to be, uh, whoever takes the picture would need to be down low. Uh, you're looking into the mirror and not glancing back up at the photographer. She has a picture in her lap of who she'd like to look at, look like when she's older. There's a doll laying there. Uh, she's sitting on a stool. Can you recreate this one? There's another challenge. Dots. Dots. It's a profile. As he's looking sideways, and he is nothing but dots. Pretty obvious why this is a challenge. Oh, this is a challenge. I don't know how anybody would even do this. Uh, I said something to uh, a couple of the classes that said, I really don't know anybody that even has a horse. Uh, but let's say that there was a painting and there isn't of a boy riding a dinosaur. Well, then what might could happen uh, would be, you know, you don't have a dinosaur. I don't know anyone who does. Uh, maybe you have a carport that's uh, away from your house and the boy could climb up and sit on the top of that carport and act like he's riding a dinosaur. Remember, you don't have to have everything actually the way it is. Other uh, things that stand out on this is the man riding the horse, but it's also that gold cape, uh, something flying in the wind. And this is a Van Gogh. Uh, this is a painting he did of an old man. And the thing that stands out in this painting is the yellow hat and that everything is yellow and blue. I mean, just the colors are what makes this. The old man has an expression that's easy to identify. He has a white kind of beard and he's holding these hands together. How could you recreate this? And again, it doesn't have to be a guy, a girl could do this. Here's Degas sculpture of the little uh, dancer. Uh, this is all about the position of the body, the legs, where the arms are, how the head is positioned. Uh, again, this one doesn't have a lot of color in it. How in the world are you going to turn yourself into the skeleton of a steer? I don't know. Is it impossible? Really, nothing's impossible if you make your mind and think about it. Here's another Picasso challenge. Again, this guy's just falling apart. He's got stuff going in the wrong direction just everywhere. How could you do that? It would be super fun for everyone who would 
get to see what you did. The blue and white striped shirt, I think it's pretty important, but you know, it doesn't have to be blue and white striped. Oh, this is a Raphael, and this painting is all about red. Red, red, red. Red on the head, red on the body. The man is looking up. Is he looking up to God, or is he looking up at someone who's laughing at all that red? Who knows? But he's holding a pen, and we know he's writing something, and he. we also know there's a book he's had out for some reason. This is a Rembrandt. Rembrandts are uh, about dark colors, and you know that. So this painting has really got lots and lots of brown. Now, um, sometimes, uh, even on phones uh, that you take pictures with on smartphones, you know, they have filters where you can make something look like uh, black and white, or you can make something look like it's got, um, they call it sienna colors. That's kind of a brown look. Um, the, the broom or the mop the little girl is holding uh, you wouldn't necessarily have, you could hold anything that has stick on it. Uh, she's got a wooden bucket over there to the side. You don't have to have a wooden bucket. You could make it be something else. Her hand position is important as is her face. She's really not looking into the camera or into the viewer in the painting. If you were into a museum, she's not looking at you. She's kind of looking through you. Here's another challenge. Another horse. This horse looks like he's seen better days and the man does too. Uh, the thing that's important about this is the position again. Look at the way the legs are, the arms are, the head is hanging down low. How could you do this? It's a challenge. This is a Renoir. It's the two dancers. Their positioning is important. It is important that the uh, woman have on white with the red and the man have on the dark blue with the yellow hat. That's the colors are really important in Renoir's. Uh, position is important in the colors. The background, I wouldn't worry about that background at all because what jumps out at you are the two main figures. Here's three pictures of Norman Rockwell. I mean, a real, if you look at it. So we're looking at him when you, uh, the camera would be taking the picture, we see the back of whoever uh, it does this one. We see them looking into a mirror. And we see a drawing they had. Now, do you have to be able to draw like Norman Rockwell? No. I mean, it might be even funny to put a funny drawing of yourself that you're making up there. I wouldn't try to make it look real because remember, it's just a recreation of what you see. I threw this one in here. It says super challenge. Uh, uh, this one's going to be worth the most points of all. But remember, you don't get the points, all of them, unless you execute. And that means you do a good job of recreating the painting. I would not go to, with this one unless I get to really thinking about it. Think, you know, I could do this. However, I don't want anybody piercing their eyeballs. And if you uh, get piercings in your nose and chin and your mother says, what have you done? You say, well, it was for a project for Miss Hesse. I don't want to hear that, folks. The color blue, uh, the color gold is important in this one, too. But, you know, y'all are really clever, so I'm not saying it's impossible, but it is a super challenge. This is Sargent. He painted this man uh, in the Middle East where it's really hot I and mean, it gets up to like 120 sometimes. Uh, we, it's hard for us to understand this, but the more clothes you have on, the cooler you are. And uh, particularly if the clothes are almost always white because the white reflects the sun. This is a challenge. It's uh, it's called the swing, and the the movement is what is hard. And she is on a swing. Uh, she's got a lot of frou frou on her dress and has that hat. She's not looking at the viewer. She's looking kind of down to the side. Again, with this one, I would let the background go and try to concentrate on making uh, my recreation be of the girl swinging. This is a Toulouse Lautrec poster. The thing that jumps out at you on this one are the colors black and red. And that's what this one is all about. It's about those colors. Uh, it's also about the position. The man is holding something in his gloved hand, but I have no idea what it is. And here's the last one. And it's a Van Gogh self-portrait. Uh, this is actually a portrait he did of himself after he cut his ear off. Uh, that's that bandage that you see wrapped around there. I don't think they tell you that in assembly, but that's what it is. But the thing that stands out in this uh, painting that you would want to recreate is the blues and yellow and figure out some way to make it look like thick paint somehow, which is kind of a cool thing to, to do. So these are the ones that you have to choose from. Now, I want to give you a word of, uh, of advice here. 
uh, although you don't get this in your Google Classroom until Monday, I have put this slideshow on the Wiener GT website. You can go to the Wiener GT website, look under Matilda at home, and you'll find this very same slideshow there. Now, let's say two people want to do uh, the a Picasso. Whoever tells me first gets it because you cannot do the same one someone else is doing. So if you wait and pick yours later, it may be that the ones that you're interested in doing will be gone. So you can get on there today and find one you like and send me the name of the one, email me, send me an email, tell me the name of the one that you want to do and tell me the artist and kind of what it looks like because uh, there are a couple of Van Goghs on here. So you need to say, you know, I want to do the Van Gogh, the one where he has the blue hat on or whatever you want to do. I would go ahead and do that because I have not met with fifth and sixth grade yet. Uh, so uh, if you want to pick yours before they get in here and start picking them, I would go ahead and do that by getting on the Wiener GT website, looking at the slideshow, finding one you want to do and email it to me today. Today. Now, on Monday, you're going to see these forms. I'm going to read these to you because I know uh, that this is project. You're not going to have me there. If you run into a question while you're working on this, you can always email me. Some of you, if you have my phone number, if your parents have my phone number, they can text me or they can let me know through Remind. But this is what you're going to see when you open up your Google Classroom on Monday. And I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. And this is a week-long project. The, your final picture of you in the painting recreation will be due next Friday. It'll be a week from tomorrow. It'll be due a week from tomorrow. All right, so here's what you're going to see. And it says, did you know that people are more creative when they have little to work with? You are at home. You don't have costumes there and you don't have props. That forces you to really use your creativity to look at what's around you in new ways. This project will do just that. You have met many artists and seen their work in assembly. This week's challenge will test your creativity and your attention to detail. You will recreate a famous work of art with you as the main subject of the created painting. Some paintings are for second grade only. But second graders may choose a different painting if they wish. The rest of you guys may not choose a painting with the word second grade. You will read the instruction sheet and the rubric before you begin. This is important. And on Monday, you're going to see when you open up your Google Classroom, there will be a doc there that you can open up that has this instruction sheet that I'm reading to you. It will also have uh, the rubric on how it's going to be scored. And it will also have a place for you to send me your plan. I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. And here's the last thing on this page. Some paintings have the word challenge on the slide. Well executed challenge paintings are worth double points. For instance, this assignment is worth 100 points. However, if you choose a challenge painting, the point value of everything is doubled. Try to get the most points in your class. And really what I mean there is, come on, fourth grade, let's beat those fifth and sixth graders. All right, so here's the instruction sheet, and there are seven instructions that you follow. Number one, look at the first two attached images that show a famous painting that has been recreated using a real person or people. Notice that it is the most noticeable thing or things in the painting that have been recreated. Now, when you open up your lesson on Monday, there will be two more pictures for you to look at that you haven't seen of recreations that people have done of paintings. And remember, it doesn't say you have to recreate everything in the painting, just the most noticeable things. Number two, think about what you could do to recreate the painting using objects and clothing around your house. Are there things you could easily make. What about colors? Are the colors of the objects and the clothing important? What about the background? 
What could you use? Remember, with imagination, something could become something else. Think about the props in the painting. What do you need? Is there something you could let represent something else? Number three, think about the shapes and colors in the painting. What colors must be the same in what you recreate? Remember, not you don't have to recreate everything the same color. The only time you pay attention to color is if the color is really important in that painting. Number four, think about the faces. Is the face showing joy, anger, fear? You must make that same expression with your face. Number five, think about the movement and the position of the body. How should you stand? Where should you face? What about clothes, hair, hats? Remember, not everything has to be exact. The things that stand out in the painting need to be something easily seen in your recreation. And number seven, are there special challenges? Are you trying to create abstract art using yourself? Wow. Think of a way you can do this. All right, now this is the thing that I have to have before you send your photograph of you creating your painting. Uh, I have to see your plan first. So on Monday, your plan, you will work on your plan. When I read your plan, if the plan looks okay, then I will send you an email and says, I have approved your plan. And once your plan has been approved, then you can start uh, getting your stuff all gathered up to have the picture taken of you as the part of the painting. I'm going to read the plan to you and you'll get it on Monday. First thing, who is the painter of the painting you chose? And I want to know why you chose it. What was it about the painting you chose that made you want to choose it? Now today, if you send me an email telling me what painting you want to do, all you have to do is just tell me the painting. You don't have to fill any of this out. All I want today is the name of the painting that you want and I'll put your name on the slide. And then when those sticky fifth graders get their hands in this project and they say, oh, I want to do this one. And they're going to see your name on there. They're going to go, bummer, you know, because they're going to want probably some of the ones that you're going to want. Number two, what objects or props do you plan to use for your recreation? So, I mean, if I was a little boy and I'm doing the picture of the uh, someone that riding the dinosaur, I'm going to put the garage. So you're going to put down what specific things or objects you're going to use for your recreation. I want to know what you're going to use. Number three, what clothing, hats, and accessories will you need? What are you going to use? The lady that did the one with the toilet paper, she's the one I'm going to use toilet paper and a big ring around the toilet paper. And I'm going to have a, a black on with a white shirt and the cuff turned up. She's describing what she's going to use. This means that you're not just throwing it together. You've got this all planned out. Number four, are there unusual colors or lack of colors in your painting? The Rembrandts are lacking colors. If so, how are you going to handle that? Are you going to try things that are things that are just that color? Or are you going to try to see if there's a camera filter? What are you going to do? Number five, if you chose a challenge painting, what about the painting creates your challenge? I mean, what do you see that's the hardest thing in that painting? How are you going to deal with that challenge? I want to know how you're going to do it because golly, I want to know because some of them stumped me. I want to know what you figured out. Now, this is the rubric that when you finally submit your picture of you as the recreated painting, it'll be towards the end of the week or whenever you finish it, you have to complete this rubric and turn it in at the same time you turn in the photograph of you in your recreation. Now I'm going to go over this rubric just a little bit. And I want to tell you like all rubrics, the one is bad. And if you see underneath all the ones I have, no, 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 no. I don't want to see any of those ones. That's just, that's not going to happen. So let's look at number one. I use props or substitutes of objects that have the look of the prop in my recreation that are found in the painting. So, I mean, you, you pick stuff. And if you look on the four my props rule, 
And what that means is you have, you have thought of some really creative things that you can make be other stuff that just absolutely is wild. It just blows my pantyhose off. Number two, my clothing and accessories, while different, will remind the viewer of the clothes and the accessories in the painting. And that four is my clothing rules. Number three, my background, while different, will remind the viewer of the background in the painting. It's just like, I'll go back to the one of the girl laying down in, uh, that was looking at the gray house in the background. Uh, the lady who recreated that in the, her background, it was the shopping center. But it did remind me of the gray houses that were in the background of the painting. So this says my background rules. Number four, my facial expression and position of my face and body are like my painting. And number four, wow, it's the exact same. The lady who did the toilet paper one would not get the four because she didn't have her body turned right. So I would probably give her a two. It was a little like it. Her face looked right, but her body was all wrong. Number five, I have given my recreation creative ideas and used creative ways to bring the painting to life. And the number four is creativity plus. Threes are good because threes mean, yes, I did what I was supposed to do. I did it. Fours are exceptional. That means above and beyond what I could have ever, ever imagined. Now, if you'll give me a minute, I'm going to get out of this slideshow and come back to you. And then we're going to talk about it. All right. So here we are. We're back again. Uh, everybody with me? All right, so I'm going to stop the recording and I'm, we'll just talk. So let me get down here and stop that. Uh, hang on just a second. Let me stop the recording. Uh, stop recording. All right, so here we are.